Fight to talk, back again, and today I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Jamie Bates ahead of his glory kickboxing bout against Harold Gregorian on February the 20th? February 29th. 9th, yeah. Jamie, massive fight for you, mate. Huge it's... fight. Biggest fight in your career. Um, what can come off the back of this is massive uh, potential put yourself in line for the next title shot. So, uh, he's a hard bastard, proper hard bastard. He's, um, he, he'll come in and he'll try and take your head off. He's got, I think what he's going to try and do is push us against the ropes. He'll probably watch your last fight and look for stuff to count on. So, I've, I've put a few different things in the game. Um, but it's, it's a huge, huge fight for me. You touched on that last fight as well. I mean, it was a clinical performance from you. It was, I know there was a bit of the wins where he was uh, pushing it. You sort of made comments on that. Chat but... shit get banged, didn't it? <laughs> That's what happened to him. Chat shit got banged. <laughs> but from that performance, so how much did you take away from that? I know almost immediately after you were looking at her the next yeah, opponent. I was um, that fight there was was 18 months. I, I pretty much I hadn't finished with kickboxing as such, but I went to boxing, so I hadn't kickboxed for about 18 months, and then they give us uh, that hold up. And I think it was 43 wins with um 29 knockouts and like four losses, so it was a massive test for us to come back to. And uh, it was one that maybe <clears throat> for the first couple of rounds it kept us a bit hesitant, but then the third round when it opened up, things went a bit weird. So, uh, but that was a nice one to get back into. And then uh, immediately I got a message saying, Oh, there was two potential opponents for the batter Rico on the card, and uh, Gregorian was one of them. And then I was like, Yes get us in there, especially on that undercard. Yeah. But now I've got him, um, it's massive, he's number two. Former champ, and uh, he's a totally winnable fight. Yeah. I mean, you've already said there what you sort of expect in terms of a fight from him, and I think you're certainly putting the perfect sort of game plan and play going yeah, into this yeah. one, going down to see Paul Daly in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Of course, Justin Burlington, the likes Ryan Scope as well. Training a lot with Nick Gittis as well at World's End Boxing Club. Yeah. What does having all these athletes from other disciplines, the likes of school, Ian Burlington coming across from MMA, obviously having Nick there for your boxing, how much of a difference does that make to you as a fighter and help you as an all-round fighter? I think it just puts more tools in, in your toolbox. Um, like Justin and Ryan, I mean, they're both phenomenal stand-up fighters. You know? so they are brilliant. Um, especially Ryan, suit sort of Kokoro instead. I think he's about the same height, same sort of stamp build wise but I'd say Ryan's a better technical fighter than him. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting that from him and then when I go down to Sport Paul Daly, like toughest one of the toughest bastards on the planet, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I've got to be switched on, I've got to be fit and make sure like Paul, Paul's Paul's a good guy to spar with, but make sure I'm switched on when I spar with him. Um, and then Nick, he's like he's he's a brilliant technical technician with his boxing. You know, he just thinks his stuff outside the box and we'll be working on stuff with Gregorian. So like it just adds more to my toolbox. And you, I just feel like you have to bounce off people like that, you know. Yeah. And if there's people up here like Justin and Ryan who are spot and I'm not using them, then I'm, I'm stupid, you know. That northeast scene, sort of. I guess how fortunate are you to have that round, of course, in the next gym. You've got the likes of Lozzy, Joe Lowe's, You've got yeah. Abel Hunter. You've got like we previously mentioned there as well, Ryan and Justin. Yeah. In terms of northeastern combat sports at the minute, just how good is it? It's awesome. Um, we do get overlooked a lot in the northeast, but I mean, look, look at some of the athletes we've got. Look at some of the previous athletes that we've got. You know, I mean, if you look on the boxing scene, I mean, even going back to the, the lads who've been in the UFC, Bellator, like Cage Warriors and stuff like that, we've got some of the best who's, who's been there, and especially on the boxing scene. Um, so it's nice to see the lads getting the limelight. You certainly sort of leading the charge in terms of the kickboxing side yeah. of the northeast as well. Last five years, I'd say, we've seen that massive growth and development in MMA in the UK. Yeah. Can you see that come with kickboxing? What do you think needs to happen in the UK for kickboxing to start getting bigger and on them more recognisable stages? There needs to be a massive investment. It needs to be televised. They need to promote the fighters. Otherwise, it will just stay where it is in the UK and it will be popular abroad. I know they're trying to break the American market, which makes sense because it's huge. But uh, in, in England, we've got big talent. You know, there's some big British fights out there. Um, but I think they really do need to get on the TV and promote the athletes. And I'm going to promote myself and the sport as much as I can because I love the stand-up fighting. You just punch and kick each other and that's it. There's no clinching, nothing. You just get stuck in. That's what I like. I just like punching people pretty much. I would love just to box, but I can't just box. So I kick box instead. <laughs> but um, I like it. just really need to hammer the promotion. Otherwise, it's going to stay where it is. Of course, it's in Harrods back garden as well, if you like. Yeah. Um, in Holland. Dutch boy. Uh, Does that affect you at all, or is it? No, the pressure's on him. I know he's going to have his home comforts, 
because I think where it is is pretty much close around his gym apparently. Um, but I'm not bothered because I'm probably going to get put up in Amsterdam, I'll go out to nice restaurants and stuff, chill in the hotel. My weight cut won't be huge, I hope. Uh, so no, it doesn't, it doesn't bother us. I'm, I'm on a big card with the main event on the Super Fight Series, on the UFC Fight Pass, so massive platform, the pressure's on him, and I'm going to pezzle him. Uh, absolutely pezzle him. <laughs> for you, for your driving force as well, I mean, every year you saw Mark Hill, especially I was on that in the lead up to this, even on your Glory profile, you talk about your daughter and striving yeah. to make her proud. How much of a driving force is that for it's you? It's everything. Um, like, I'm living in my mum's spare room at 30 year old because of the lifestyle I chose, you know. Like my mum's, I, I work two, three jobs, uh, training twice a day, and I need a big break, you know, I deserve it, I've worked hard for it. So, get me a big break, I beat him, get me title shot, and then doors will open, you know. That's the way I'm looking at it, and I need to put a roof over my daughter's head. I can't be living in my mum's house for the rest of my life, you know. She's not bothered too much now, she's eight year old, but uh, like, that's, it's not right, you know. So I want to put it before her head, make sure we do all the nice things like holidays and days out and stuff. And ah, she's she's been me and driving for us. She sacrificed so much, you know. I just want to provide for me, me kids, you know. I know you're certainly not looking past this fight, but no. if you do get the nod against Harrod, how do you see the rest of your 2020 playing out? Uh, I'm I'm not sure of the way. Glory sometimes works a bit funny in terms of who gets title shots, yeah. but I don't see why I shouldn't be in line for a title shot. Um, if I get a nod against Harut, I would maybe like to fight in America against somebody. You know, I'd like an American fight. I would even maybe like to fight the loser of Harut and uh, of, uh, Cedric Doombe and Gronhardt, because mm -hmm. they're both two massive fighters. Especially, I would like to fight Gronhardt because he's the one and only K1 and Glory champs. He's a massive name. Doombe has been annihilating everyone recently, it'd be a massive fight. But uh, I like, I'm pushing for the title. If I get the nod against her, I'm pushing for the title, 100%. And can I finally get a prediction off you for you, how you see it going on February the 29th? I'm gonna make him miss, I'm gonna make him pay, I'm gonna make him frustrated. He's gonna try and kill us. Like basically, I'm gonna push him to that point where he's trying to kill us, he leaves himself open, and then the shots are gonna land. That's that's where I'm, I want, I want a pezzle him, I want to put on a mint show. So, Do that's you? it. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate the time, mate. Thank you.